Hey everybody, for those of you that are looking to build an Iron Man helmet like this, whether you want to motorize it or not, stay tuned. I'm going to be walking through how to do it in today's video. Now one thing to note, you'll see it is roughed up in a couple of parts. I don't really plan to focus too much on that. The main reason is once it's wet sanded and then painted, most of that is really not going to be noticeable. So in a couple of cases, either when I was moving or just wasn't being very careful, I had this packed up and a couple pieces broke. But all in all, it's still a relatively easy build. I I used plastic on the inside to melt everything together instead of glue, just to give it a little bit, a um, little bit of a stronger adhesion. Also, I just had the extra plastic laying around. Now, these are the pieces to motorize it. I don't plan on using them, but if you're interested, that is something you can do. So this is the helmet itself, and I'm going to be doing all of this using an Ender 3 V2, so you're not going to need the nicest, newest printer. You can really use anything, so let's go ahead and jump straight in. Okay, so I did want to go ahead and walk through the print settings. I'm only going to be doing it for one of the items, and that's going to be the one that's going to take the longest to print. So we'll do that in a moment. But I did want to give some credit to the individual that provided all of these files. So you'll see this is the website where I got them. And basically, you can typically find it just by Googling Iron Man Helmet Articulated Wearable. So you'll see right here we have all of the various files, and you can see what they look like when they've been spray painted. And this even includes wiring setup diagram information, uh, basically all the stuff that you would need to enable this to be something that can actually open using servos. So basically you can open it with a switch. And it also has a dimmer for the lights for the eyes. So it's a really, really cool file. And I think it's awesome that it's been provided. It has tons of views. So again, you can look this up if you're interested in learning more about this particular project itself. And you can see basically everything on this page. Now we'll expand Cura. So we are going to be covering this particular piece here, although as you can see from the previous page, there are quite a few different parts. The reason I'm covering this one is I want to make one video for doing a longer print on the Creality Ender 3 V2. The other reason is just because it's the file that's going to take the longest. It's the largest file, biggest piece. Um, so just kind of wanted to walk through this very, very quickly and basically what the print setup is for me. So to make this more easily accessible for newer individuals in the 3D printing space, so people that are new to 3D printing, including myself, I'm going to basically be doing all of this for uh, or with default settings. So when we open up Cura, you'll see that we have <clears throat> this piece here, and I'll show the printing uh, throughout the video of this piece and then some of the others. But this one is going to take the longest for several reasons. First and foremost, it's the largest. Second, you can see the supports that are needed with these red lines here. Those have to go from the bed all the way up. So you'll see that this is honestly pretty close to filling out the entire bed for the, uh, the Ender 3 V2. So you still have some space, but I did just want to walk through that. So what we have for settings, it's uh, you'll see it's set to super quality, 0.12 millimeters. I believe that was the default on my computer. Nothing special, basically everything set to defaults here. We have support placement, it's set to everywhere, the default overhang. Again, you can typically manage these settings to reduce the print time, but we're keeping the defaults here. So when you go to slice, you'll see that we have seven days, 22 hours, and then we have the estimates here for the cost based on the filament that's being used. I have a video I'll link in the description if you want to learn how to get this set up as well. So this is the setting for this particular item. I'll be using the defaults for everything else, but it looks like the majority of the other items are either going to print in several hours or in two days or so. Okay, so we are jumping into the print. You can see that it started, it's been going about seven minutes or so. So this is the front face plate of the Iron Man helmet. So I had to level the bed a couple of times trying to get it as tuned in as possible. So I'll keep updating throughout the video, but this, according to Cura, basically with just the original stock settings for everything, it says it's gonna take around seven days or more. So I wanted to keep an update on this. All right, so I left this going overnight. Now, I don't recommend leaving these printers unattended at any point. Um, so this one's been going for about 14 hours nonstop, and you'll see the time remaining is basically just over 100 hours. It looks like everything's coming out pretty well so far. I'm not seeing any issues, so I'll keep continuing to give updates on it. 
All right, so we are about 18 hours in. I'm getting a little bit concerned. Some of the supports on the right side fell off, which I haven't really experienced before. In addition, I'll try to get as close as I can, but you can see the supports right here seem to be experiencing some issues. I tried to trim them, which I definitely don't think is the best option, but just trying to get them out of the way since everything else seems to be printing relatively well. All right, so I wanted to do a quick update. I'm continuing with this print currently. I probably shouldn't be. Everything's looking relatively good. My only concern is you'll see on this side there's a random support standing. And on this side, down here, you'll see that there is one that fell. So I want to go ahead and make this mistake so that you don't have to, and just kind of show what ends up happening as an end result. But basically, you'll see that support that fell over. I tried propping it back, but obviously that's not something that would be likely to work. And in this case, you'll see that the printer tried printing on top, but didn't actually work. All right, so we have officially passed the 50% mark, so I'll try to focus in right here. So you can see printing time greater than 100 hours. We have about 96 hours or so remaining, and you'll see everything's coming along pretty nicely. This is using a lot more filament than I thought, but honestly, I guess I should have expected that for a seven day plus print. So I'm gonna do a quick walk around so you'll see everything looks pretty symmetrical. Um, honestly, overall, I think everything looks good. I'm mainly just focusing on the actual mask piece itself, but everything seems to be coming along very nicely. That one support that fell, it looks like it was going to be supporting this corner right here, which seems to be, uh, it seems like it printed pretty well, so I don't really have any major concerns right now, so I'm glad I let this continue to print instead of stopping it early. So at this point, the only major issue that I had during this print was the spool up top, so I'm using the Inland PLA Plus filament. And I had an issue where I heard a popping noise, and it was because the filament, it doesn't look like it was wound correctly, so it was actually tangled. So just to get through this particular print, I'm just taking it off every day and uh, unwinding about a day's worth. So I'm just kind of backing up from the printer, pulling some of that filament around, making sure that it can actually come off easily. All right, so I did want to walk through really quickly what I've been doing every day. Uh, probably not the best solution to this, but you can see we have just under two days left, and everything is still coming out very, very well. So when it comes to the filament, which is not something I would recommend doing, but I did want to show one of the issues that I had that I mentioned previously. So what I've been doing is every now and then I've just been kind of unwinding it just to make sure that it's able to kind of pull the filament out as expected. Again, this is not something I would recommend doing during a normal print, but I really don't want to go through the process of clipping this, pausing the print, and running into any issues. Now, I did want to do a really quick update as we are closing in. You'll see that we have about 17 hours left. So I did want to do a really quick walk around and just show how everything's coming out. We do have a little bit of stringing and things of that nature, but the actual mask itself overall seems to be coming out pretty clean. So I don't really have any complaints, and I'm really glad that I didn't stop this print after a couple of days and decided to basically just let it keep going. Okay, so we are wrapping up this print. Okay, so I've gone ahead and taken off the supports. I did want to show this part really, really quickly just because I'm sure some people may have some questions about this. You obviously don't want to end up damaging this since it took so long to print. So um, I'm going to show the finished product really quickly just to show all the different corners and sides. But honestly, I think that this print job turned out very, very well. There were some imperfections up on the top, but I just took... This piece that came with the Ender 3 V2 and basically just did some light scraping. Uh, you're going to want to do that really at your own risk because obviously you're going to have the ability to do primer and sanding. But just wanted to walk through. You can see some slight imperfections from removing everything here, so removing those supports. But all in all, I think it came out very, very well. So you'll see, especially on the outside, I think everything looks very, very good. So what I did to actually remove the supports, which is why I wanted to cover this very quickly, you'll likely have supports coming on the outside right here. You should just be able to peel those away. So basically I peeled these off the sides right here and then there was another one on this side. And it was sitting in basically just like this. 
So there's a piece where the chin is that pushed through pretty easily. And then at that point, I just lightly pushed on all of the sides going all the way around and on the top. Now the top does have a little bit more material. You can see where it's kind of stuck to the inside. So you'll see that this is going to be harder to remove. So the main reason I wanted to record this part is just to say, be patient, slowly push your edges in all the way around and then at the top as well, and then repeat the process and just kind of continue to go around. And then eventually it should just pop right off. All right, so we also have this piece here. You'll see it's just dome underscore 04. You'll see that this one here is just gonna be a little bit more concerning to me because it does have these very, very small individual supports that you can see over here in the back. All right, the next part is done. All right, so I left out a little bit of video footage primarily because I was using the wrong type of profile. So I was looking for options to speed up this print process, primarily because the two pieces that we have so far have already taken close to 10 days to print in total. So rather than go through all of that and basically take another 10 to 15 days to wrap up this project, I changed the settings a bit. So I will make sure that that's been added. I should have actually already covered that. However, I did want to note that I'll have a separate video I'll link in the description covering the issues that I experienced with this particular print, mainly the stringing that I was getting and just using the wrong profile in Cura for an Ender 3 Pro, which was just kind of cutting some corners. So what I've done now, I've gone ahead and replaced the roll of filament. So previously I was using the white 3D printing filament from Inland, so it's just the PLA+. Plus. I was using white previously, and I swapped out for this print to the Hatchbox PLA. I've seen this has some pretty good reviews online. I don't think it's going to be good to do a review of the two in kind of like a comparison, since not only did I swap out the filament, but I also swapped out the settings for the print. So I just wanted to make a quick note of that, but at the very least, basically just making sure that I have enough filament to get through this print and the remainder of the project. So I'm expecting this is probably in total going to take about, I would say, a roll and a half or a spool and a half of filament. All right, so rather than speeding up the video right now, I did want to make a quick update on this piece here. So this one took about 55 hours using all of the default settings. All right, so I'm down to the last two parts, and unfortunately these two aren't printing well, whether they be by themselves or uh, when I've tried printing them together. You'll see there are some semi-complicated angles and rounding here. I wanted to do everything with the default settings, but as you can see, it's just not really going to be possible on this. So what I did was I increased the temperature. I'm trying to keep everything as close to default as possible, but then I also opened this in Tinkercad, and you'll see I added in some kind of like manual supports right here, which I'm hoping should be able to help this to print as expected. Now trying out a new enclosure, but you'll see that this came out much better. It's one small issue. I'll either have to reprint or try to get that secured on, but let's go ahead and do the next side and then we'll have all the pieces printed. All right, so we have all of the pieces in this bag here. Now, rather than show the assembly, I want to just make a note that the assembly instructions can actually be found on YouTube. All right, so everything is finished up. There is obviously plenty of touch up that needs to be done. So there were some pieces that were breaking when I was moving and kind of packing this up. But I'm going to go ahead and rotate this around a little bit. So basically what I did is any place where something broke, I kind of fused it just using an old soldering iron with some leftover plastic. So all in all, it doesn't look great, but I don't think it looks terrible, especially considering the next step would basically just be to go ahead and apply some kind of a paint to it. So basically I would sand it down, wet sand it, then apply kind of like a base layer to help the paint stick to it and then just paint over top, which would basically just get rid of all of these little imperfections. But all in all, I definitely think, especially for printing mostly on default settings, 
I think it came out pretty well. Now, the actual uh, file itself does come with additional pieces so that you can set it up to where this will raise and lower, but I looked up all the parts involved and that would be about $100, so it might be something worth doing in the future. However, for now, I just melted a little bit of plastic to fuse this mask on, and then we are basically all set. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment box below, and let me know your thoughts.